Hey Mystical Illuminations, my name is Jax Atlantis and today we are going to be taking a look at our first Pluto lesson. So the idea of this series is going to be to talk about Pluto in each of the houses and how we can apply that to our own natal chart or how we can apply it to the client that we're working with, um, how we can sort of look at their chart under a new lens or a new view. Um, Pluto sometimes gets really swept under the rug and I think that that's not a coincidence. Um, it just so happens to have connected with it all of the things that societally sometimes we have a difficult time talking about or facing or addressing within ourselves. Pluto is, of course, the planet of death and rebirth, and so, of course, between the rebirth and death is life, and between the death and the rebirth is the afterlife. So, you know, there's a lot that is encompassed within this planet, especially in context to our soul, our soul lesson in this lifetime. You can argue that Pluto in the first house, as our very first example, would be that your soul had to express itself through the identity house. It had to do so through the expression of your overall self. Um, and what's really interesting about being in a way defined by your Pluto in the first house is that it might be one of the most powerful placements in your entire chart. What makes Pluto in the first house so interesting is that um, people who have it tend to emanate or sort of, you know, they they almost exude a mystery about them, a certain power within them. Um, it's hard to exactly put into words, and that's part of what makes it so powerful, is that it's enigmatic and, and mysterious, and it's something that we can't always quantify right away or figure out. With Pluto in the first house, of course, you know, you've got Pluto in the house of the self and in the house of how it is that you identify, which, of course, means that our lesson in this lifetime, the polarity point of Pluto is going to be the seventh house. So through relationships, this is how we learn to fully understand ourselves. And our natural proclivity with Pluto in the first house is going to be all about the self in, in different ways than you might think. So with Pluto in the first house, you might be someone who is an extremely loud and dynamic force. Um, you might be someone that is incredibly powerful with your energy, or perhaps because as a Pluto first house, you're going to encounter several um, clashes in this dynamic. You're someone who then went into suppression, and that's one of the elements of Pluto that we are going to see a lot as we study this. With Pluto, things tend to go, you have your mastered balance in the center, and then you have supreme suppression or supreme possession, you know, so it's the possession of another person, or it can be being possessed by this thing that is hidden within the self. And there is a lot in Pluto that, of course, is hidden. Um, there's a lot that is underneath the surface beyond what we can look at, and that's why there's an inherently psychoanalytical nature to Pluto and, of course, Scorpio in the eighth house. So we with Pluto in the very first house, um, there's going to be a lot of uh, shifting and changing in our life when it comes to our own identity. We're going to experience deaths and rebirths that basically embody entire spheres. So for example, Pluto in the first house might early in life get into a you know a young relationship in which they are totally transformed. Um, they, there is a death and rebirth of their identity that comes directly from the power that they experience in the seventh house relationship. Um, what they experience then causes them to metamorphize so that they can sort of fit into this role. However, what they experience then is of course an identity crisis and so after after you know that breaks apart they're then you know wondering what it is that they're going to do next with Pluto in the first house you might you know for example be an identity you might present yourself in such a way but you're still curious about who exactly it is you are and so maybe you go to a seminar or a talk and that seminar or that talk uh, completely redefines the Pluto first house. I mean, they literally, their entire persona changes, their entire speech pattern changes. Everything about the way that they exude themselves into the world completely and totally shifts. It's not going to be as simple as one character trait that starts to you know change. It's something that is incredibly radical in nature um, because there is either going to be naturally a lot of tendency to suppress or a lot of tendency to become almost possessed by your own transformation. Now, whether or not this is a good thing or a bad thing is really dependent on how exactly it is you're transforming and whether or not there is authenticity to your transformation or if you are handing off the 
power of this transformation to the source of transformation like the the catalyst of the transformation may have been an emissary of the universe but of course it is you who has to make the choice whether or not you're going to change and whether or not you're just going to try and change into what it is that was catalyzed or whether it is you're going to change into your full self so what you'll experience when you're reading charts and especially the pluto first house charts is pluto first house you'll see that there are literally these chunks of their life that are very clearly marked as the caterpillar state and the cocoon state and the butterfly state you'll see these transformations and it's as if you're talking almost to the current iteration of evolution of this person when you read for them you're talking to the current them you are not talking to necessarily the whole them depending on where they're at in their stages of transformation and it's a really interesting thing to witness and so what starts to happen with Pluto first house is once they start to reach more towards the center. So for example, the relationship doesn't just utterly transform them or or this one you know uh, experience or a catalytic experience they had outside of the relationship totally changed them but instead they'll be able to start integrating they'll be able to start taking pieces of these different things that are authentically connected with them that actually resonate with them and then embodying these things in, a, in basically the true power they were meant to do um, Pluto first house just exudes so much natural magnetism that they're going to constantly have people that are catalytic figures come into their life they'll even wonder sometimes like am i just you know designed differently do i can i just not have a normal friendship or a normal relationship you know because of the sheer intensity of what they've experienced so far in their life path they've they've had a relationship which became hyper enmeshed and then it became incredibly volatile and it blew up and they changed utterly and then you know they they went through this phase essentially where they attended a talk or a seminar or a spiritual gathering or something and that altered their life course completely and so they get changed so much by the world and so part of when they take their power back is when they're making the decision to change when they're making that decision and so when they of course have to face their seventh house polarity point of Pluto this means that the relationships that they select are sort of is signifiers of where they're at in this journey of transformation for example if they just choose a relationship that is very hands-off in a way where they know that the other person isn't of course going to be able to match their power um, you know so it you know basically it's a relationship that they'll choose so that the person isn't interfering with their own journey or their own quest or do they choose a relationship in which they know that they can be incredibly close-knit with the person but only because they are in a placement of control and where there is control of course that's where the illusion is that you won't be hurt by the other person and you can prevent that from happening again essentially that you can take charge of your own evolution because there's no way that this person can catalyze me if I don't you know if I basically am in control of them enough that that they won't be able to to have this effect on me or they won't be able to to ever step up to this power um, that I have. So it's something that Pluto uh, first houses deal with a lot. And um, so what they have to find in relationships because so much of their soul quest is how to be in them and how to be themselves while in a relationship that they eventually will have to choose partners that are able to challenge them on one hand they are able to meet them at that level um, whether or not it's also another first house Pluto or a seventh house Pluto so someone that can directly oppose them um, but essentially someone that can meet them at that level who can respect their independence um, and, and respect their independence rather than the Pluto first house choosing someone whom they know they can keep their independence because this person could essentially never have any say over what they do um, and so it's something that that they're going to experience a lot in this life and of course with the first house analogous to Aries and Mars there is a natural tendency for Pluto first house to have to be forceful or at least to think that they have to be forceful in context it's certainly something that in many cases they're going to experience in their early life well whether it's parental figures or teachers or other friends there will be forceful people in their life that try in a sort of cloud over their energy or dominate their energy and they might learn unfortunately that throughout their life well what I obviously have to do in this world is to dominate people before they dominate me first and so 
what the Pluto first house also has to experience is, of course, a sense of genuine trust. Um, they have to be able to embody and find trust, even though they've seen so many examples where trust didn't lead to something that they wanted. Um, they have to be able to have that leap of faith and essentially to go into the unknown place that they were born from. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of power and a lot of energy that is hidden within the Pluto first house. It's um, whether you're experiencing it in someone's natal chart that you're reading, whether you yourself are experiencing it through a progression in your chart, it is, it's pretty unmistakable when you experience Pluto in the first house. It's an energy that immediately calls attention to you. Oftentimes, Pluto first housers are able to essentially go into incredibly deep conversations with you. They're able to um, go into all these other subjects, especially any that require deep thought or critical thinking, because in some way they're, they're defined by that. And whether it ends up expressing itself intellectually or through artistic talents, um, the Pluto first house essentially will be an unmistakable character. Um, with Pluto in the first house as well, we're going to experience a lot of times in which because there are a lot of forceful people that you will naturally um, be prone to building certain habits as a way of response to them. Um, just like when we were talking about how other people might try and dominate this energy, it's really because when other people um, don't accept the Pluto within themselves, they're not accepting this Plutonian energy that they have that we all have, um, then when they experience someone else who is essentially an embodiment of it, they become incredibly stressed out. Um, especially, you know, for example, if you had, um, you know, someone who they have no connection with what it is that is hidden within them. They have no connection with what it is that they're capable of, you know, beneath it all. They have no connection to their hormonal instincts or their animal instincts. They have no connection with the parts of life that are that are inherent, um, you know, that that essentially that that come from places that we don't talk about in the civilized world. So in all of those energies that they experience, when you they come across the Pluto first house, they might be essentially immediately triggered by them. And so this is something that the Pluto first house has to understand. They don't have to turn down the volume on their existence. They just have to, you know, basically be around people that can hear the melody that they're playing in the first place. People that can accept that intensity. They can accept the um, the almost the forbidden words or the forbidden song that is being sang through your existence. So um, yeah, it's it's pretty intense stuff. And so this would be this was a place that I wanted to start out with first. Um, Pluto in the first house. As you uh, experience it, uh, you know, through the clients that you work with, what you'll notice a lot of times is it's going to have a direct effect on you, the person who's peering into it. Um, you, you know, essentially as you're peering into their chart, um, you'll start to recognize a lot of the ways in which they are holding up a mirror to you that's incredibly reflective whether or not you meant to even look at that. Um, so, you know, in all the different astrological chart combinations you could possibly come across, there are many that are going to change your perspective of how you view things, but Pluto first house is one that almost every single time, if essentially if you're someone who really has a big lesson to learn from Pluto, when you work with a Pluto first house person, you're going to get a large, uh, you know, like, you know, heap of that lesson. You're going to see a, a large quantity of everything that you need to look at yourself. And so it's going to be really interesting to experience. And of course, if you've ever experienced meeting someone and then pulling up their chart for the first time, you see their Pluto first house, it will immediately start retroactively describing exactly how the two of you got into the conversation you originally did, why they were able to essentially like meet you on that level, why they were able to go into the depth, why they were able to um, talk about all these different subjects, especially of a spiritual, uh, in a cult or a psychological nature. They were able to to kind of go to those places with you. So it's really, really interesting. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to be creating a full um, audio of this Pluto first house video, as well as um, other ways to apply it. One of the things that I want to do is make, uh, you know, an extension of this video where I talk about Pluto in context to synastry charts. So as we're looking at our relationships, especially, um, you know, where exactly Pluto is falling between the two of you, um, how those connections happen, um, Pluto in composite charts as well. 
Pluto in progress charts. I want to go into further detail about that and some of the things that you experience through this. So if you guys want the full audio of that, um, I'm going to have it as an instant download on ClearSight Consulting. I'm going to be putting it out on Wednesday. So if you guys are interested in that, make sure and comment below and I'll make sure and get back to you guys in the comment section um, as soon as we have that released. But thank you guys for tuning in today and I will talk to you all later. Thank you.